All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the former CEO of YouTube, Susan Wojcicki's son, who is 19, just died in his dorm room, and somehow this is good, and a lot of people seem to be celebrating this. Some people are saying she found out he was using an ad blocker. Another person said the sacrifice of her own success. Bro must have been using an ad blocker. Vaxxed, a womp. And there's some other wild comments like, the ritual has began. A sacrifice was given. If it was a vax injury, we will never hear about it. Susan was a huge advocate for sensitivity censorship and the suppression of health related information what goes around comes around his last youtube search was fentanyl overdose what to do quote but he got a five minute ad what an evil woman he got demonetized irl and listen a lot of these comments are very hateful and disrespectful because to a lot of these people susan wojcicki ruined their lives to a lot of these people and potential creators and just viewers at the time that susan wojcicki was the ceo of youtube to them she ruined the platform and then banned a lot of channels that didn't deserve to get banned and you know we had the whole demonetization ever you couldn't even swear or say anything non pg-13 without getting your entire video cut off from earning ads so to a lot of these people she absolutely is the bane over their existence and they probably couldn't care less that her son is now dead which i find just completely ridiculous as no child should pay for the sins of their parents just because susan was a horrible ceo does not mean that her son deserved to die now i want to read this one post from this former creator and his name is mr obvious and he said, I'm not going to virtue signal over how sorry I am or quote, even if you don't like her, she doesn't deserve this quote crap. Susan Wojcicki destroyed and ruined so many lives. For years, she directly destroyed my livelihood. Obviously, no parent deserves to bury their child, but, quote, spoiled rich kid going to an Ivy League school overdoses on drugs, quote, is a tale as old as time. I went to a community college. I didn't have money for drugs. Then when I finally built a small career for myself, Susan came in and targeted channels like mine. She literally ruined my life. I feel sorry for the kid, as idiotic as it may have been, but I have zero empathy for Susan Wabitschke. She didn't care how many lives she destroyed i don't care about hers get mad about it cope and seethe i will never back down on this and as you can see this guy's very passionate about the situation as he said himself he was a college student he was broke guess he was an upcoming youtuber who was getting steady income from youtube and then for whatever reason his channel got terminated and now he has a grudge against susan and if i were in his position i'd probably feel the same way but you know i don't know emotions are a complicated thing and clearly he feels like his life was ruined and a lot of other people do too some people are saying she voted for this another person said she found out he was using ad blocker killed him dead someone else said never show empathy for villains wish them only the worst another person made this meme saying it is so true rich fails in values i had fun on youtube but can't even go on because it's being throttled to the point it feels like a dial-up with this meme attached of susan in clown makeup with the caption we want to help small content creators in a sarcastic manner somebody said i don't feel sorry for the kid somebody else said karma is the bitch now at this point in time i can't really dictate how these people are supposed to feel or not to feel and i can't change their opinions on the matter all i'll say is that even if susan was a horrible ceo or a horrible person or if she supported horrible policies does not mean that her son should now be shitted on online for what is likely a accidental overdose of whatever drugs he was taking that may have been laced with fentanyl now i'm not gonna get into any politics here but we already know where fentanyl comes from obviously most of it not in this country from other places not within our region i'm not gonna say the words but you know, something needs to be done about this, you know? Too many people are losing their lives because of drug overdoses. Ironically, two matches passed because of an alleged drug overdose. Now, according to the New York Post, though, they say the 19-year-old son of former YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki died Tuesday inside a dorm at the University of California, Berkeley. Marco Troper, a freshman math major, was found unresponsive in a Clark Kerr campus dorm around 4.23 p.m. And emergency responders' attempts to resuscitate were unsuccessful and here as we can see is susan with her son and her husband they say he ingested a drug and we don't know what was in it one thing we do know is it was a drug. We want to prevent this from happening to any other family, added Esther Wojcicki, who is the grandmother of this young man and the mother of Susan Wojcicki. They say a toxicology report to confirm Troper's cause of death will take up to 30 days, but I'm sure they likely already found out how he died and what was already ingested. The grandmother, Esther Wojcicki, remembered her grandson as the most kind, loving, smart, fun, and beautiful human being in a touching tribute. Our family is devastated beyond comprehension. Troper, a promising math major, was in his second semester 
professor at UC Berkeley and a member of Zeta PSI fraternity. Marco's life was cut too short. We are all devastated thinking about all the opportunities and life experiences that he will miss and we will miss together. But yeah, I mean, with all that being said, hopefully now that a powerful, a very powerful person's child has OD'd from something that has been affecting a plethora of families in poverty, middle class, and poor families all across this country for over a decade, maybe this will finally shed some light to the problem. Like, the issue is so bad that there is a whole YouTube channel called Texas Pictures Documentaries that I found about last year, dedicated in uploading documentary quality videos on all the victims in Texas, teens and young men who are dying from fentanyl-laced drugs. And it's just like sad. Like I want all of you after this video to head on over to this channel, Texas Pictures Documentaries, and just take a look at some of their videos. I mean, it's really heartbreaking, honestly. You know, I'm scrolling through this page right now and you can see there are hundreds and hundreds of videos of just people just dying off of this stuff coming from across the, well, you know, I can't say that in this video for obvious reasons, but the one video that I saw last year that really messed me up was this one right here titled fentanyl poisoning joshua gillahan's story so this is joshua gillahan and he was my only child he was only 14 and he was our world I honestly can't comprehend why this is not an absolute national emergency. I don't know why we're not having press conferences from the White House, just like we did for COVID, regarding um, this fentanyl crisis. I don't know why on everyone's TV there's not a scrolling banner at the bottom, you know, warning everyone that nothing is safe unless it comes from a pharmacy. You know, I, I just, I can't comprehend why a bigger deal is not being made of this situation. Really, we started having some issues, noticing some changes um, around the seventh grade. So he was about 12. And my husband, when him and his friends came home from being out and about, um, he just suspected something was weird because we had to go somewhere and my son ran upstairs real quick to put his backpack away and that was kind of weird. So my husband wondered what was in the backpack and he ended up finding some marijuana in the backpack. We had many talks even before this happened about drugs in general and you know, you could, you have your path to choose, your choices make a difference and all of that. Many, many talks. And so of course we started that again and you know, tried to do everything we could to explain to him why we were so upset. He really felt like, you know, pot wasn't that big of a deal. Marijuana, what's the big deal? It's all natural, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we started, you know, having more talks and of course keeping him under a tighter rein. Um, we even started um, counseling, trying to figure out what was causing him to want to, you know, do, you know, self-medicate or what have you. So we did that for a long time and then it was just a battle. It was a battle for a year and a half. We'd find it, he'd get in trouble. It was just kind of back and forth on and on. I don't know really all the details yet, but at some point he apparently got some, um, what he thought was Percocet. And we didn't find this out till after he passed away. And so, um, so I don't know if he did that because we were testing him for THC or what really happened, but one morning um, I was leaving to go on a business trip and I walked up the stairs to, um, to say goodbye. And he didn't answer. And so I got closer and you know, I leaned down to kind of like, you know, shake him and, and wake him up and he was gone. And he had been gone for a long time. He was really cold. Oh my God. I just walked up here to say goodbye and I think he's dead. My husband was already at work, so, you know, first you're in disbelief, you know, you're like, his room was always really cold, and we'd gotten a new AC system, and so at first I thought, we just need to warm him up, you know, <laughs> just crazy thoughts, but I knew he was gone. <laughs>
but I, I wish I would have done more. I so wish I would have joined these groups that I'm in now so I could have shown him, you know, the young people that this is that, that have died, you know. Um, you know, I just, I didn't even realize, even as a parent, you know, I didn't really realize the depths of it. And I, and that's a lot of the guilt, you know, that I have is that um, we thought we had our problem under control. And I, I didn't let my, I didn't let myself go to the next level. I mean, I literally was worried about him damaging his brain from marijuana. I never dreamed that he was going to take something that, could, that was going to kill him. He, my kid was not perfect, but he was a good kid. He was smart, he was good, he was loving. He was a good kid. And there are a lot of kids like him that are probably doing similar things and their parents don't know it. They're thinking, not my kid. And everybody needs to understand that it can be your kid. If it was my kid, it could be anybody's kid. And that's where I'm going to stop the video, honestly. I'm sure many of you, while watching that, felt what I initially felt while I first saw this video. And honestly, I'm sure that is what Susan Wojcicki and the rest of her family are probably feeling right now. This is a serious problem we have here in America and across the world, I'm sure. But being that in America, in the USA, we are the number one consumers of opioids and narcotics and hard drugs in the entire world. So that speaks volumes and something needs to change something needs to happen and that is all i gotta say but do let me know your thoughts and opinions down below i'm sure many of you who watch my content and have been watching for many years probably have had family members brothers sisters aunts uncles dads who've been impacted by this i briefly spoke to a viewer last night and she told me that you know even her dad was lost to fentanyl four years ago and she misses him every day addiction she says definitely needs more attention may marco rest in peace and i agree with her 100 percent but who is fueling this addiction where is this addiction coming from and how do we stop it that being said thank you for watching hope you learned something in today's video and new video tomorrow